Well, within education, actually, it's, it's, I think, a simpler story than the one within the creative arts, because in the creative arts, I think that, that people are rightly reluctant to tell people that they have a kind of moral duty to make their work available on, on a, a free and open basis. Whereas in, in education, in scholarship, um, it really isn't scholarship unless it's open. I mean, the, the difference between uh, scholarship and alchemy is whether or not you tell people what you've discovered. You know, the Enlightenment is all about publishing. Before, before the Enlightenment came along, every alchemist had to discover for himself that drinking mercury was a bad idea. And as a result, scholarship kind of stagnated for, for several centuries because everyone was dropping dead from drinking mercury. And it was only publication that gave us science. And so if you're a scholar and you're not publishing, you're not really doing scholarship. The same is largely true of education. Um, as as uh, educators, we're all in the same boat. We're all... Uh, trying to attain the same objective. And the curriculum material that we develop, while it's very important, is not the education itself. The education is what we do with it. And so, you know, even if you're in a private institution and you're making your curricular materials available, it doesn't mean that, that the next private institution down the road can, can clone you just by looking at your curricular materials. Um, they need your teaching skills as well. And, and that, I think, is the, uh, the thing that teachers really sell. Um, teachers don't teach secret things. Teachers teach things by definition that are widely understood. That's, that's what we hire them to do. Calculus is not a secret. Um, and so I, I really think that, that um, making materials available under Creative Commons, remixing other educators' materials under Creative Commons, and encouraging your students to use Creative Commons materials and to put their materials in the Creative Commons makes a lot of sense. It's a good question. I guess um, in terms of in terms of uh, resources, um, people who are in charge of, of educational systems, administrators of educational systems, um, have an opportunity to create repositories, to identify good works, to reward teachers who who produce good works and put them in the in the Creative Commons, and to support teachers who re, who remix and improve those works, localize them, to uh, maintain running lists of materials that need to be localized. So things that have been identified to work well in one jurisdiction that need to be translated or, or, or localized in some other way. Say you have uh, some British material um, that would work very well in America, but it references all British place names. And uh, it just needs to have some American place names put in in order to be more accessible to an American audience, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of policy, I guess it, it mostly revolves around um, teaching teachers that while there are a number of restrictions on how they can use commercially published works that aren't in the Creative Commons that may make it harder for them to do their job, that you shouldn't stop educating teachers there. You need to continue to educate teachers about the opportunities that await them if they avail themselves of Creative Commons licensed works, that they don't have to count their photocopies, that they don't have to worry about quoting too much in a paper or giving it out to their students. All of that stuff, um, I think, makes uh, will we'll give teachers um, I guess a bias towards open materials that will um, act to increase the market for open materials, that will act to increase the quality of open materials, and so on in a virtuous circle. So I produce educational material. I have a book of essays that's very widely used in university curriculum. Um, my parents are both uh, PhDs in education. They both produce a lot of educational material as well. Um, I think that there's a, a, an awful lot to be said for material that is just packaged in a way that's convenient to um, to teachers and students, and that uh, where it's it's. Uh, you can deliver something that's better than they can produce in their own classroom in terms of printing and packaging and, and value-added material. That's always great. Um, for example, uh, O'Reilly is the largest tech publisher in the world, um, wants to sell more uh, technology books to university students. And the, the traditional wheeze for doing this is that you um, bring out new editions every couple of years that add a, a kind of sliver of new material, but, but bugger up all the page numbers so that when profs get, you know, they, they, they assign the third edition of, of you know, the, the big book of abstruse biochemistry, uh, that when they say read page 398 through 422, unless you've got the third edition, those page numbers don't line up. Um, and this is what keeps students from going to the bookstore at the uni and buying um, uh, used books, used copies of last year's textbooks. Um, 
Safari, the O'Reilly Online uh, book publishing tool, does much better than this. What Safari does is they take all the material from all of the editions of all of their technology books, and they allow profs to sit down and cherry pick chapter by chapter the material they want to put together in a single text. And then those profs can order those books as print on demands that are, their students can buy at a slight premium over what you would expect to pay for a trade book, but not at the very high premium that you would expect to pay for a, for a textbook, because those textbooks are very, very expensive compared to, to traditional trade publishing. Now, the fact that every prof's text is different every year, and they are because they always contain new, up-to-date, relevant material, means that students really do need to buy a new book every year, that the, this year's students really do need to buy the new book, but the fact that the, pr that the um, university or the publisher can be guaranteed of selling new books every year means that they can keep that price point a lot lower, which means that students aren't penalized in the same way. So there's a real opportunity there to piece together course packs, essentially course packs of a publisher's material, providing support to teachers, providing black line masters and supplemental material to teachers, providing workshops to teachers, providing networks to teachers, uh, providing um, uh, uh, best practices, going around and um, interviewing teachers who have used your materials very successfully, uh, and then uh, getting those teachers to help you build workshops that you can use to teach other teachers. All of that stuff is kind of in the cloud of services that you can provide around educational material. Um, I guess as much as I like to see uh, educa uh, educational publishers and writers sustained, I think at the end of the day, it's not the educational system's duty to do that. Um, the educational system exists to educate students, uh, not to subsidize publishers. Now, if publishers are selling something that the educational system doesn't need to buy anymore, then it's kind of not the educational system's problem. Uh, you know, you could say the same thing, um, what about all those uh, music publishers who produce sheet music that uh, teachers uh, would buy for their classrooms? Well, there's this huge pool of public domain music that, uh, you know, choral music, orchestral music, classical music that, that um, band teachers can just photocopy for free and hand out to their students. What can we do to help sustain music publishers who rely on that stream from band teachers for their public domain music? The fact is that if band classes can get by without paying for that material, that sheet music, and use the money instead to, say, buy newer instruments for their students, this is a good thing for the educational system. And it's kind of not the educational system's problem to go figure out how Peter's Edition or some other big music publisher can go on sustaining itself. That's really their job. Oh.